I don't think that's gonna be possible. Hello, fine people of the interwebs. Today I'm gonna to be working on Mr. Dose, my 91 MR2 turbo project car for all you new folk. Up above my head here is a link to the last video where I worked on the car. Oop, there's that. Haru Ken. <laughs> I have a few things that need to be mounted. What? <laughs> Now that you can see through my windshield perfectly, uh, you can notice this crappy old falling apart rear view mirror. That's where this guy is gonna come into play. The rear view mirror that I bought from a Lexus LS 400 and I painted black to match the car. However, for the auto dimming feature to work, I need to wire this thing up. Also, this shape up here where it mounts a car is slightly different. For the most part, it's the same though. I'm gonna pop these T-tops off so you can see what the hell I'm doing. One the T-top cover. Where are you? There you are. There we go. Don't worry, no tabs were harmed during removal of this piece. It took me a while to figure this out when I couldn't get these lights to work, but the ground for these lights is actually one of these screws. It was, I don't know why it took me that long to figure it out. It's really simple circuitry, but still. Come on, there we go. See right here, the LS400 rear view mirror mounts to the roof of the car, just like the MR2, instead of to the windshield glass, like almost all other cars do. Now, if you see this part right here on this back plastic area, this is actually what is coming in contact with the mount for the LS400 rear view mirror. Hello. Trimming this top portion by the orange sensor off will allow it to bolt up exactly like the factory rear view mirror. And then I will have a mirror that is not falling apart. Whatever it is, it's some hard steel. And on top of that, I, uh, I have to also be careful because this part is transferring heat into a plastic cup. So I have to keep stopping periodically and let this cool down so I don't melt the cup that it's sitting in. Cause that would be no bueno. That'd be a rookie move. Da -da -da. There, got it all notched out and I even took a corner off. Time to test fit it. Okay, hoop, ouch, Oh. This little guy goes right here. Okay, it's huge, jeez, <laughs> that's so big. So much bigger than the factory review mirror. I love it. Here is where I trimmed it. It presses just a little bit on the headliner material right there, but that's fine. I just gotta trim a little bit of this plastic on either side, like right here, just a corner of it. That way it doesn't rub on the arm by the headliner area. And then oh, obviously I gotta do the wiring still. Okay, like that right there. That right there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Good. I spent the past hour researching wiring schematics, trying to figure out how the circuit works on this auto dimming review mirror since there's four wires going to it. Based on what I can figure out, the way the circuit works is these sensors right here on the mirror send a signal to the side mirrors via these two center wires to tell them when to dim since they don't have their own little sensor. And then the other two are my power and ground, I'm assuming, because it's red and black. I really don't want to destroy my brand new mirror, so I'm gonna use a power probe and just test this. I hope I don't screw this up, because that'd be really sad. This is gonna be tricky. Okay, I'm gonna ground this by power. Pay attention to the color of the mirror glass. See how it's clear, opaque right now? Is opaque the word for clear? Whatever, anyway, 
Ready? I'm gonna aim the LED light at the sensor. <laughs> See it? Now it turns dark greenish. I cover the sensor back up, and there you go. Now it's clear again. This isn't going to be as simple, however, as just tapping into the power supply for my map lights because that is a constant power source that is going to give power to the rearview mirror regardless if the car is on or not. So I need to tap into a different circuit so that way it only gets potential when the car is on. What I need is a power supply that is fused and only on when the ignition of the car is on. That way it doesn't kill the batteries. Luckily, I know a spot. Hi, I slept. I'm gonna wire some stuff now. Before I get to work, I was doing some thinking last night. What if hypothetically I were to buy a Gen 4 3S GTE, put it on a stand in the corner of the garage here and build that engine? Rods, pistons, big turbo, everything, cams and then get it ready to drop into this car since this already runs and drives. As it stands right now, this is a perfectly good running engine in this car. I'm kind of limited in how much horsepower I can make with it because it has a stock head gasket. So, there we go. The benefit of the idea is I can keep driving and enjoying this car as it is now while that engine kind of sits on the side and gets built. Okay, because then I could put new harnesses in this thing also because it'd be converting to a Gen 4. You are off. These are all popped out. There we go. A pillar off. Don't judge me by the look of these sun visors. These came out of a junkyard car and I haven't had a chance to clean them yet. Come on, you little tabberdoodle. Now I can run this wire up underneath the headliner, down the pillar. Come on, there we go. One more. That goes to a uh, junction for the taillight circuit. Review mirror's gotta come back out so I don't tear the headliner by pulling it down to tuck that wire. And also, I don't want to drop this because that would suck. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. I made a harness for it so it comes off. Can I route the wire through this existing wire jacket? I don't think that's gonna be possible. This stuff right here, it's actually a foam backed adhesive that you're supposed to put behind panels to keep it from rattling in cars. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to wrap my wire in it to act as a protective jacket to keep it from chafing. That wire is good right there. Yep. Put this guy back on here. It's really hard to hold a camera and do this at the same time. I'm just taking some black electrical tape and I'm doubling it up alongside this existing wire so it runs along the factory path right here. Pull the rubber up. <laughs> That's what he said. Back on the subject of the engine before I forget, it's just hypothetical speaking. Just, I have big dreams, okay? I, I can dream, right? So much stuff I want to do. Do any of you have potential? So blue has nothing. But when I turn the power on, aha, there you go. That blue wire is the one I need to tap into for power. That's actually a good circuit to tap into because it's fused, it's on only when the car is on, and it has larger diameter wiring already because of the fact that it's a power window motor, so it's gonna draw more amperage than if I were to hook it up to just like a smaller circuit in the car. Okay. Be plenty right there. All right, let's go back in your home. That's not too bad. That looks pretty close to factory right there. Heck yeah, dude, it's done. I can't test it out though because I gotta wait for the battery to finish charging. So uh, let's fast forward into the future a little bit. I'm back. I had to get my nails fixed. They were looking kind of janky. So, all right, battery is charged up on the car. 
I was gonna wait because I'm gonna film some more tomorrow, but that wouldn't be a genuine reaction of testing out the mirror. So I gotta move the car. I gotta record it. I don't know why I'm doing this right now. I very easily could have just did this in the morning, but I am so happy with that. So, so, you, you have no idea. See, it's the little things in life that make me happy. Rear view mirror, it's all it took, but a smile on my face. Okay, hopefully you charged up. I'm gonna need a light to trigger this thing. All right, let me start the car anyway. Ooh, the LED light's illuminating on the inside of it. What's the audit, what does it do? Off, on, <laughs> it works. I'm pretty sure this is wired correctly, but I'll do one last test just to verify. Ready? Oh yeah, check that out. Auto dimmed, yay. That's a happy girl face right there. I'm excited, all right, this isn't the end of the video because need your input on something before I start filming the next video on the MR2. So, huh. Map sensor, solenoid to control the boost, more cables. This right here is the Innovative SCG1. This is not sponsored, I bought this for the car. It is a uh, wideband boost controller for the MR2. Now, I bought this because it does have a gauge right here where you do everything on the gauge. What I don't want, however, is A-pillar gauges in this car. I personally am not a fan of A-pillar gauges, so that's out of the question. I guess I could do it above the steering column. They do make a piece that you can order. However, it's for two gauges, so I'd need to think of another gauge to put here. There's a company that makes this lower portion of the dash right here that has a circle kind of molded into it to put a gauge in this corner, which is really clean, and there's also the option where you can replace your cigarette holder thing <laughs> ashtray with two gauges down there but it looks kind of crappy the way the plastic's molded there's also the option to remove the vents put gauges here but i need my ac when it gets hot out in the summertime so these right here are my propane urethane bushings for the entire car with the exception of the sway bars because this thing is sloppy I, like, I don't even want to go over 50 miles per hour in this car. It's that sloppy. So, with all that said, that's what I'm looking at doing next on the MR2. These are the last two important things that I need to get done before I can really drive this car and have fun in it. It's not safe because of sloppy suspension, and I gotta do more boosts. The only problem is with the boost controller also, I need to drop the fuel tank on this thing still. Let me open this real quick so I can explain this better. So behind that heat shield right there in front of the X brace is two aluminum lines that go to the heater core. Those of you that are caught up on my channel, you already know about this, but I gotta drop the fuel tank on this car, clean it out, make sure I get all the old nasty residue that's in there from this car sitting for so many years before I bought it, and then fix the heater core so I can properly bleed the coolant system and then ensure I have fresh fuel in this fuel tank, and then I can turn up the boost. These are the next two jobs I gotta do. Let me know in that comment section below. Get the SCG1 hooked up in here, or do the suspension bushings on the entire undercarriage of the car and get it realigned. But yeah, I know there's a lot of talking towards the end of this video, but I really do appreciate everyone that's watching this right now, your input, especially my OG subscribers that actually give a shit. I make these videos for you to watch. My YouTube channel doesn't exist without all of you. So anyway, I, uh, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.